Hello there. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want to start off this reaction by saying thank you, and I hope you take the time to listen to this and not skip through to the episode itself. I just want to say thank you. It's been an amazing journey we've lost thus far, and we got plenty more to go. Today, I did a normal live stream on a Friday morning because I am unavailable this weekend to do any live streams, and it is probably the most successful live stream I will ever do on the channel. It was absolutely sensational. I cannot thank you guys enough for all those who tuned in, donated, it was absolutely phenomenal. It brought tears to my eyes because it, you know, made me realize that maybe I can do something on YouTube. And I continue to entertain you guys, hopefully. And I hope you I hope you guys enjoyed the content that I am putting out. Um, and by the time you were seeing this, you would have seen my reactions to, you know, um, Lost Season 1 in its entirety. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed those reactions because I felt like the reactions themselves got better as the season progressed. I was really happy um, with the reactions towards the end of the season. I thought like, you know, it was had the had, had a great mixture of like energy everything everything it just had everything in it and i felt like i was um you know in my bag in those later reactions um and i absolutely adored lost season one but here ladies and gentlemen i just want to say thank you for that absolutely sensational live stream as you can probably tell i am still lost for words like i cannot believe that a normal friday morning absolutely made my day made my week just like that a normal live stream where we were ranking the lost characters in season one and yeah, we didn't even get to the tier list to later, later on because I was absolutely speechless. But yeah, thank you guys so much. Thank you guys. You losties are absolutely phenomenal. You guys are phenomenal, man. Like absolutely beautiful people. So kind. God bless you all. So now it is time, ladies and gentlemen, to begin season two of Lost for the very first time. My name is Ellie Moses, a 24-year-old law and field student here in Sydney, Australia. Absolutely shooting his shot. And this episode is titled Man of Science. Man of Faith. I think we know who said that line before in season one. And yeah, if we're going off the trajectory of lost finales and lost pilots, this should be a banger, ladies and gentlemen. We've only had one before, one pilot before, and it was an absolute banger. But yeah, I, I'm very excited for this season, man. Oh, but like we're at the tip of the iceberg only. Just the tip of the iceberg. So yeah, we're going to get into the reaction. We're going to have some fun with this thing. And as always, let's absolutely smash it. Let's go. Here we go, man. Let's go. Feels like ages since I've watched season one. It's only been a two-day break. <laughs> Extreme close-up shot with the eye. Who is it? That looks like a sad face upside down. Order 66? I also want to say something I said on stream today that I didn't say um, in the reaction itself, but, um, you know, for the ending of season one, you know how we had that final shot itself um, of the camera slowly pulling away and descending deeper into the hatch. I feel like that was a message from the creators to the audience themselves, and I'd like to see how people reacted, you know, at the time. Like, it'd be interesting to see to get the general reaction of people having to wait that long, oh, not not long, not long, but like six to six months to a year, I believe it was, um, in between seasons to finally reveal or finally start to get a little bit um of answers for the hatch itself and what what what's inside. And yeah, I feel like that was a message from the creatives um at the end of that episode to say, you know, we're just getting started. You're only going deeper down the rabbit hole to the viewer itself. It was a message to the viewer that we are only you we are only just beginning, ladies and gentlemen. The island itself literally was the surface level for this season and we only dealt with the island but now we're going to go deeper and deeper there's going to be more secrets revealed i love that deeper into the unknown we go we don't necessarily need to go to space ladies and gentlemen for the unknown the island itself is full of mysteries and i love that that, that, that that's what i feel like um that final shot intended right there at the end of season one it was a message from the creatives um you know to the audience themselves we're just getting started baby we've only scratched the surface Fifteen kilometers on the bike. Nice, nice, nice. So who is it? This might be a new character, or it might be Sawyer, based off the hairstyle. But it doesn't look like Sawyer's body, though. That's some Captain America serum. What is it, man? Oh, maybe this is inside the hatch. Maybe it's like a secret science lab. Maybe maybe that was the explosion of the hatch.
Hey, yo, it was. Okay. Quite interesting. We begin literally with activity inside the hatch, and then we pan back up. We thought it was like another flashback to possibly maybe another survivor on the plane. My guy was just getting his day started, but it's still nighttime. <laughs> 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, 4, 8. We're dead. 15, 20, <laughs> 16, Are you okay? Huh? Yeah, awesome. I just have to pee. Great idea, dude. Go look in the burning death hole. <laughs> burning death hole. Picking up right where we left off. I wonder if season one and two were filmed back to back. What is it? Doesn't matter what it is. We blew the door so we could get everyone inside this thing so they'd be safe. That plan is not gonna work. We'll never get everyone down in time. Well, why don't we all just calm down here? Huh, look, if you wanna go exploring in the morning, that's fine, but tonight we're done. I'm gonna go get the dynamite that we didn't use and we're heading back to the caves. So how about you pack it up, John? That ain't gonna happen. Maybe he will listen to sure. it. Oh, okay. Of course. <laughs> okay. I thought Kate was gonna side with Locke for a second. Why don't you want to go down there, Jack? What the hell is that thing? Piece of the steering column. All right, let's go. Keep hey, that yo, call Jack, man. Age my father. Already did. Tell me. What's with the head? The car jumped the divider, went head on with an SUV. BP's dropping. I need a syringe. Big one. Beautiful. Hold pressure. Ah, I hate hospital scenes, man. I hate hospitals. Oh, no. Sack's flooded. BP stabilizing. Time of death, 8.15 a.m. Really? 8.15 a.m. as well? Yes. Water. Did you hear that? Sweetie, you need to take it easy, okay? Oh, it's this Sarah. is this is Sarah. He wants to dance at her wedding. She said she has to dance at her wedding. Is it Sarah? Yeah, it is. And it's those little moments that even that even trick you. Not trick you in a way, but there's those little moments right there have awesome reveals themselves. Um, and yeah, already beginning the episode itself with a pretty awesome reveal that it seems to be a human in the hatch, but he seems to be injecting himself with some substance. Um, listen, could be some like, you know, Captain America super soldier serum or maybe prolonging his life. He's been there for ages. Who knows? Who knows? But yeah, a human resides within the hatch and seems to, you know, be experimenting himself down there or seems to be part of like, like I said, at the beginning of you know season one a larger you know corporate um scheme or something along the lines of that. some big plan some cult of humans who knows like crazy stuff love it but uh that was ethan has anyone seen vincent the dog anyone seen him has anyone seen the dog where are you going i lost the damn dog hey it's not the damn dog man it's Vincent. Yo, the, the temptation must be crazy. Why'd you do that? Why'd you light the fuse, man? Why wouldn't I light the fuse? Because Walt said not to. <laughs> uh, maybe because I was running towards you, waving my arms, yelling, don't do that. I guess I was just excited to get inside. I mean, that's why we came here, isn't it? That's why we went all the way out to the Black Rock. And why we got the dynamite to blow the hatch. We did it so that we could get inside, Hugo. And to save everybody's lives. And to save everyone's lives. Yeah, see, that's that's where the priorities... Maybe it was just our destiny, right, John? ...will differ between Jack and Locke. <laughs> Guys, uh, it's the hatch door. You better see this. Nice! Vincent! This is not a good idea. I saw him five minutes ago. Besides, you're the one who said there wasn't anyone out here. I said we didn't see anyone. The dog will come back on his own. He always does. Watching that dog was the one thing anybody ever asked me to do. If something happens to him. When was the last time you slept or had something to eat? You're exhausted. 
I can't tell that kid I lost his dog because I was exhausted. Now, now Vincent looking sus, man. Saeed could not have gone that far away. Yep. There we go. Sauron talking again. The one ring. The whispers. I'm sensing a jump scare. Oh my gosh. Walt. What are you doing here? Shannon! What is it? What? Hmm. That's interesting. Because I I thought to myself initially, I'm like, that could possibly be Walt right there. Um, especially after what we saw go down in the finale. But I doubt he would have gotten away. Um, because he's only a kid. And it could be a situation where the island itself is playing tricks on Shannon's mind or maybe giving her a premonition of the future that Walt is going to return. Um, just like Boone had that, you know, interaction with the island himself where the island was playing tricks and he thought Shannon was dead. Maybe that's maybe that's him seeing into the future as well. Maybe the island's giving a premonition that Shannon is meant to die in the future as well. I'm not too sure, but at the same time, you have to think that, you know, um, Boone had the hallucinogen or like the the um the the liquid on his on his, on the back of his head. So he had that as well. He had the cream. Um whereas Shannon doesn't. So yeah, interesting stuff. But it seems like the island might be playing tricks on um Shannon here. Unless Walt got away really quick. Why do you want to get down there so bad? Lee. Why do I want to get down there so bad, Lee? <laughs> Jack thinks I'm crazy, doesn't he? Why? Because you want to drop into a hatch that's been locked from the inside by a foot-thick steel door that says quarantine? Well, look at the bright side. The damage is done. Bright side. And if Jack thinks I've lost it, I can't blame him, really. Then again, five hours ago, I was pulled into a hole by what appeared to be a column of black smoke. Did you see it, Kate? <laughs> I love how his eyes widened when he said that. See, I said this on stream about Locke, and obviously I want to keep pausing. I don't want to miss any important bits of dialogue in this show um, at all, at any time whatsoever. Um, but with Locke, obviously, the man's on his own mission, all right? And I said I feel so sorry for him because of his tragic past, and, you know, I made that connection with... The man was raised without any parents um, his entire life. And after what, you know, he has been through, it's it's reasonable that he doesn't trust any human being or it's reasonable why he keeps things close to himself. Um, but at the same time, that could jeopardize the rest of the individuals on the island when it comes to putting um, or when it comes to deciding on certain things. And I think we've seen that before that, um, you know, Locke's self-interest Trump another individuals or others for instance um in terms of their safety we've seen it before and we've seen it happen um especially with boone's death and even he let um you know boone be alone not be alone but he left boone um to be in jack's care and completely took off is that what a real friend does uh, does if you really call him your friend um and i think that's you know w with the situation what happened to boone i think that's um Locke not really ever having a real friend in his life himself and being able to connect with someone intimately in that way. Um, we've seen it before on the phone calls with Helen and things like that. You saw how disappointed he was when, you know, the one conversation he ever had or the one relationship he ever had in his life was over the phone. And I think when it comes to interacting with individuals like face to face um, and connecting intimately with them, Locke is going to struggle um, because we've seen it in the flashbacks. Um, it, it's just a byproduct of what's happened before in his life. And I don't know if you guys will agree with me in this, but yeah, that's what I'm trying to get. Um, um, that's what I'm going. Uh, that's what I'm trying to um, get around in terms of Locke. But in terms of like their best chance of survival on the island, I feel like Locke is the ace up their sleeve in terms of like 
uh, interacting with other things or creatures in terms of like that because I feel like he's got nothing to lose really. He had nothing before in life and the island's giving something back to him. So I feel like he has nothing to lose. It's just when it comes um, to those questionable moments or those, you know, clutch moments where he has to pick, um, you know, his own self-interest or finding more like his own curiosity over others. Uh, so that's going to be interesting to see um, how it plays out, especially now with the hatch blown wide open. He's itching to get in there. We know that. Um, but yeah, that's why I love Locke so much. And the actor who plays him does such a fantastic job because I know he's on his own mission. I know he's like, you know, um, on his own path and he's enjoying the moment. He's just, he's just going with the flow and he knows... Um, you know, that the island is giving something back to him and he knows there's something up here. And that's where I think this episode's title is going to be very important um, with Man of Science and Man of Faith, you know, um, that clash between Locke and Jack and potentially other characters. You should go ahead, man. Don't want Locke making time with your girl. Joke, dude. <laughs> Not really in the mood, Hurley. Really? Wow. Usually you're like Mr. Ha Ha. <laughs> there you go. Life's not so bad, right? I mean, sure, the others are coming to, like, eat us all, and every once in a while, someone blows up all over you, but we do get to sleep in every morning. Uh-huh. And the numbers? What? The numbers are bad. That's what you were yelling right when I tackled you. Yeah, that's kind of a long story. I got time? <laughs> it's a long night. <laughs> I think I'm crazy. Try me. A while ago, I was in this kind of psych ward, and there's this guy, Leonard, and all the time I knew him, all he ever said were these numbers, 4, 8, 15, 16, 23, 42, over and over and over again. And they kind of got stuck in my head. So when I got out, well, actually a couple months after I got out, I was buying a frozen burrito, and I thought, hey, I should play the lottery. And I guess those numbers were still stuck in my head, so I played them, and I won $114 million. <laughs> that's when it started happening. My grandpa died, my house caught on fire, the chicken joint that I worked at got hit by a meteor. Well, actually meteor, right? <laughs> Transformers? Okay, so I'm get it? <laughs> I see the same friggin' numbers on that hatch thing. Just written on the side. And that's why I try to stop it, because that thing is cursed, man. Please believe him. You were in a psych ward? See, that's what those questions, man of science, man of faith. I'm not crazy. I'm not saying you are. So, what, that's it? That's all? What do you want me to say? How about you believe me, man? Hurley. They're numbers. What's that thing where doctors make you feel better just by talking to you? Bedside manner. Yeah, that. Your sucks, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what did it say on his badge? Your sucks, dude. It's those little moments sometimes. The Easter eggs. 7562667. Okay, okay. Employee number. Sorry, I just... You had to double check, okay? I had to double check. Even if there's a 99% probability that they're utterly, hopelessly screwed, folks are much more inclined to hear that one percent chance that scene parallels perfectly okay. with what just happened with Hurley. Her spine's crushed. I tell her that everything's going to be okay. That's false hope, Dad. But maybe, maybe. But it's still hope. I get where his dad's coming from. <sighs> Yo, Jack, you gotta let the haircut go, bro. I mean, he eventually does, but like. Ah, that's distracting to look at, man. <laughs> I know what I saw. It was him. It was Paul. Shannon, please lower your voice. You'll upset the rest of them. I heard whispers. Where? Everywhere. What, what whispers? I don't know them. Do you think something happened to the raft? Nothing happened to the raft. Walter's with your husband, with Sawyer. Said, I know what I saw. They're back. Locke found a... Uh... A hatch in the ground, about a half a mile from here. We left to, to blow it open so that we could hide inside. So all of us could hide inside in case. But that doesn't matter now because it's not going to work. There's no way for all of us to, to get down in there tonight. Jack, where's Dr. Arts? Uh, he didn't make it. 
Did you see them? Did you see the others? Hey, Shannon. There are no others. We've already had this. How did you know that? Just because you there is no anything. one out there. This you is don't just know. Nuts. Just make it up. Rubbish. Hey! Everything's gonna be okay. Gotta give let's, him. Let's take it easy. We're gonna be all right. Gotta give him that little bit of hope. We're gonna stay here tonight, okay? Together. We've still got four guns. We'll put lookouts at all the entrances. We're all gonna be safe as long as we stay together. The sun comes up in three hours, and we're all gonna be here to see that happen. John, what are you doing? I'm getting some cable. What for? It's for the hatch. I'm going in. You know what? At least he's saying it in front of everyone. <laughs> and not just leaving while everyone's asleep. What do you think that's the smartest thing to do right now, John? I doubt it. In fact, you're right. The safest thing is to stay here. Wait for morning. Wait for these others to see if they ever show up. Kate's going with him. Wait for the brave folks on the raft to bring help. But me, I'm tired of waiting. If he wants to do it by himself, so be it. Let the man cook. Believe what? That everything's gonna be okay. Yeah. I do. Kind of unlike you. The whole glass half full thing. There's a glass. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good thing. Saying what you said. You're taking care of everybody and just giving them something to count on. I'm going to the hatch. I knew it. I knew it. I understand why you can't go. I mean, they need you here. I I get it. I do. But Locke's going into that thing, whether you like it or not. And if he falls and breaks his neck, live together, die alone, right? Right. She was going for a dress fitting and to look at tablecloths. When is it? The wedding? Oh, uh, it's eight months. Eight again? Well, I'm sure Sarah will have recovered by then. Because, what? Um, is it eight months, one day, and five hours? Is that is that is that the wedding? Is that when it is? Like, are we serious here? What does that mean? There will be ongoing physical therapy, but if she works really well, hard, well, will we be able to? Uh... You know, like what? Of course, he's wearing black. He's a prick. Anyone wearing... You need to know that there's a chance Sarah might very well need professional care for the rest of her life. She won't be able to go to the bathroom by herself? That ain't love, man. That ain't true love. I know it's a shock for him, but... I'll tell you a little secret. Damn. It's okay. I know I'm not going to be dancing anymore. Damn, he really... He really performed a miracle on her. Still roll around at my wedding. And they didn't end up together? Really? You're invited, okay? <laughs> I really love how this episode so far is taking place predominantly at night as well. I expected to find you halfway down there by now. Bar the flashbacks. I was waiting for you. You left out the part where you just want to see if I get eaten by something. <sighs> yeah, well, that too. Not too tight. I got it. It's just three more hours, man. <laughs> What do I say if I need to stop? Stop. <laughs> That's the safe word. <laughs> okay, let's go. Even the music at the moment, um, some of the instruments, and before Kate was descending, 
It's so chaotic. It's so eerie. It's ominous. I like it. <laughs> you have no choice, girl. <laughs> One. Two. Three. Flashback to season Four. one with her counting. Oh. What in the Batman signal was that? Kate, are you all right? What a Kate just got lit up. Literally, she got lit up. Angels descend upon people. They don't do that. Kate. Like, Kate. Bro, I gotta rewatch that. Kate got lit up. That was insane. It happened so quick. Bro, it was it was a flash and she was gone. That might have been something reflecting off the mirror potentially down there, like a strong beam of light. Kate, are you all right? So that individual down there must have some sort of not superhuman strength, but. That's crazy. You're kidding, right? You're going back? Yeah. What about all that stuff you said about waiting till morning and watching the sunrise? I changed my mind. Let it lock go down? Hey! Lock! So, lock did not come back whatsoever. The Jack, yeah. Curiosity Trump Jack as well. Damn, you going up those stairs quick. Yeah, that other guy going up them stairs quicker. Oh, oh, damn it. You alright, brother? Uh, I'm uh. fine. I'm fine. Take it easy. Keep the weight off. Let me look. Damn. Is this hot? You haven't sprained it then? I don't fancy your chances of catching up with me tonight, though. I wasn't trying to catch up. Aye, right. of course you am. What do you know about sprains, anyway? I was almost a doctor once. Almost. <laughs> Small world. You're a doctor, then? I told her. I made a promise I couldn't keep. I told her I'd fix her and I couldn't. I failed. Oh, right. Just one thing. What if you did fix her? I didn't. Well, what if you did? <laughs> you don't know what you're talking about, man. I don't, why not? Because with her situation, that would be a miracle, brother. <laughs> There's almost you don't believe in miracles. Man of science, man of faith. <laughs> right. Well then you know, I'm gonna give you some advice anyway. You have to lift it up. <laughs> it's been nice chatting. Jack. Jack. I'm Desmond. Well, good luck, brother. See you in another life, yeah? See, when characters say see you in another life, like, it's lost. Like, what am I meant to do with that? That's just not a normal farewell people say to each other. See you in another life. Like, really? Like, if someone says that to me, I'm, I'm sus. I, I noticed as well, there was these two little cues 
that um, G. Aquino inserted into um, the character introduction of Desmond right there when he asked two important questions or when he said something, uh, you know, when he said something uh, like, oh, you got to lift it up or do you want to know a secret um, to Jack right there? There was this like weird wind chime sound. Um, it was almost as if it sounded like a car braking. So it could be mistaken for like the traffic you were hearing in the background. But it was, oh, I gotta, I gotta replay the scene um, and, you know, notice, I think it was played twice and um, bear with me for a second. Well, fancy your chances of catching up with me tonight. Yeah, it was inserted there. I'm trying to catch up. You haven't sprained right. it then. Wish you am. And what if you did fix it? I didn't. What if you yeah, did? it's inserted right there again when he said, what I if you did fix it? I don't, why not? Because with her situation, that would be a miracle, brother. Uh, and you don't believe in miracles. See, <laughs> characters like this in Lost do not happen to show up randomly um, and, you know, not pop up again. So I'm interested to see whether this Desmond character does resurface again um, in the show, just like I predicted would happen with... Um, Michelle Rodriguez's character, I think Anna Lucia, um, with her being on the plane, I think the other survivors or like, um, you know, um, rewatching the episode with you guys the other day, um, the one where Boone passed away or the, the one before he passed away, sorry, you know, we are survivors of flight 8115, um, makes me, I think adds more credit to what I was saying before at the end of season one. I completely forgot about that, um, in my other reactions, but adds more credit to what I was saying at the end of season one about, you know, those uh, members from the tail section of the plane, I believe, still being alive potentially. And I was talking about how the seating arrangements in particular were very important because I believe those members or some of them are still alive on the island itself. And some members, um, you know, for instance, um, I forgot her name, um, the black woman's uh, husband. I feel like he might be still alive um, because he was talked about this season and she, you know, senses that he might still be alive. She has that, you know, she has that faith that he's still alive. Um, and obviously, Michelle Rodriguez's character, her sitting, I believe, in 23G, her seat was, or 23F. Um, and obviously, 23 being one of the numbers as well. Um, so I think, yeah, there's some sort of significance with that. And, you know, this guy here, Desmond, doesn't... I feel like, I feel like he might be a recurring character in sort of Jack's flashbacks because he happened to come out of nowhere. And like I said, there's this unnerving presence about him with some of those wind chime cues that were inserted. And I know they could get confused with, uh, you know, brakes of cars. And it might be brakes of cars, but the way it sounds, it's it's eerie. It's eerie. And if you go back and rewatch the scene, it's, it, it's disturbing a little bit. So I could be completely wrong, but yeah, there's something off there. Like, that's that, that's what I'm just trying to get at a little bit. It's lost, man. Everything's important. Like... Clearly some sort of power, electricity down here, which is good. I say good, but it's a good sign, I guess. I mean, we got to see the positive in things. See, like, what in the apocalypse is that, bro? Like, honestly, look, 108. We're drawing these, like, satanic paintings, man. Yeah, this place is old, old. Magnetic? Oh, damn. Oh, hell nah, man. Where's Lock at? We're way crescendoing here to a major reveal, I feel like. Look at this. It's a whole lab. He got his working station and everything. I wouldn't do that. Where's Kate? What the hell is he? It is just a this just got a whole lot crazier. 
Am I alive? Is the guy in the caves? Smell. Well, thank you. I was about to say, is the guy in the caves Desmond, or is that too much of a long shot? Because, you know, he's interacted with Jack in the past. He said, I was almost a doctor once. Um, and he did seem to have some kind of, you know, not superhuman strength, but like some pretty good stamina. And the way he was going up those stairs was pretty quick. And we saw an individual training at the beginning of this episode who had similar hair to possibly Desmond, but I'm not too sure. Because I'm just trying to think, is this character that's in these caves um, or, you know, in this underground facility um, a character we've seen already? And in particular, this episode counts too with Desmond. Um, and that's why they're introducing him with Jack's flashbacks. Um, and, you know, we're possibly going to get two characters whose Jack interacted with beefly in his life, say in Ana Lucia on the plane um, or just before the plane and Desmond um, be on this island. That could be interesting. Um, unless it's completely, you know, well-known actor or um, actress. Could be a girl still. Who knows? But I'm guessing it's a guy. Uh, I'm, it is a guy. <laughs> uh, well-known actor that they're just introducing in this episode. Wow, you really smell. <laughs> yeah, I uh, went for a run. Oh, this is right after. You smell like you ran far. <sighs> well, I showered. I mean, I guess I just didn't cool. I... I wanted to get back down here and check on you. It was a, a, a tortoise dot. Too much. No, I, I hurt my ankle. That sucks for you. <laughs> Is Kevin here? I can't say. I didn't see him. I'm sure he'll be back. In yeah, the yeah. Tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, what? Sarah, the the damage to your back was extensive. I did everything that I could, but your spinal column, I just I couldn't repair it. Okay, that's interesting. You're gonna be paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of your life. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Sarah. We have a lot of gaps to fill. Yanking my chain, right? No. Oh, because she can feel her legs, right? Yeah, I can wiggle my toes. Yeah. Okay, what juju happened? Man of science, man of faith. Miracles do happen. And it just so happened to be after he met Desmond. you feel this? Yes. Can you feel this? Yes. Yes. This is such a... Why does Matthew Fox get all the heartbreaking scenes so well? This. Yes. <laughs> and they still didn't get married. That's insane. Reveal yourself, imposter. Move. And I kill him. Okay, the Scottish accent just... Put the gun down. So it is Desmond. Where's Kate? Jack, it's okay. I said drop it. Where's Kate? She's fine. Just put down... I'm not putting down anything. Do you want him to die? Put it down. Is he trying to put the Batman voice on intentionally to throw off Jack? Is this what you were talking about, Locke? Is this your destiny? All roads lead here. Jack, calm down. <laughs> Blow your gun, or I'll blow his damned head off, brother! Brother. You. See, that's crazy. See, that's crazy now. Because in a way, in a way, seeing, like for Jack, in a way, seeing Desmond here is stuffed up, but at the same time, it's hopeful. Because you got this underground facility powered with, you know, 
generators, electricity, um, which means there is some sort of hope there. All right. And this episode is all about faith, hope, science, everything. Um, so it's kind of hopeful that Desmond is here, but at the same time, with the way that close up shot, you know, at the beginning of the episode, the extreme close up shot with his eye, he clearly is not a sane individual, in my opinion, at the moment with what is injecting into himself. And um, I think he had a little bit of bruising or, uh, you know, um, bags under his eyes in that. Yeah, I don't know if that's to indicate he hasn't slept in ages or he's not a sane individual. Or is this driving himself mad in this underground facility all this time? But it's interesting to see that he said this episode, you know, I was almost a doctor once. And, you know, he seems to be in this lab coat in this underground facility, possibly the head... Um, of operations for some sort of human experiment or something along the lines of that. Um, it's interesting. It's very interesting. Like that was, it's so different. It's episode one of season two. And already I'm like, this is so different um, from the entire, you know, Island survival mode we got in season one. This is different from the black, um, you know, smoke, or monster we had in season one, all the troubles we had with the others, um, and we will continue to have with the others, the whispers. That's so interesting. Are these sort of things on the island all generated from this facility? Sort of like a Hunger Games thing, um, where the smoke itself is sort of, yeah, um, generated from this underground facility, um, and it's all make not make-believe, but it's all um, a product of Desmond in a way, like he created all this and it's like a human experiment to test them. I'm not, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. Oh man. Just, just when, just when you think you have, you know, just when you think you have lost or figured out, man, the, the puzzle gets, the puzzle gets more complicated. Like I bought a thousand piece puzzle and I was solving it through ent the entire season one. And I'm just like, yo, I got like 50 pieces left. Add another 2,000 pieces out of nowhere. Oh, it's a miracle happened. <laughs> nah, man. That was a great episode. That was a fantastic opener for season two. Listen, um, do I think it's as strong as the opener of season one? I don't think so. I think the season one opener is going to be hard to top. Um, but the season two opener was just as strong. Um, not just not just strong, but nearly as strong. Um, you had Shannon seeing things with Walt. Obviously, is that... Uh, is that... Uh, is that not premeditated, uh, but is that a premonition of the future? Like, does, you know, is, does, does the Shannon, um, is that the island sending Shannon a signal that something is up with the raft itself and that Walt is going to return? Um, so it's interesting. It's interesting seeing the blending of science, faith, the supernatural a little bit in this show. Um, it is great stuff. And now, you know, an I individual which, you know, Jack interacted with, um, earlier on in his life that he thought would never see again, similar to the plane, right? You think you'd never see these individuals again. Um, and Desmond said, see you in the afterlife. It's just like, you know, a, a one-stop shop, like, or like a one in a lifetime interaction with a random guy. He sees him again and he recognized him by saying brother and stuff. So yeah, clearly something I think which he holds D. Maybe he interacted with Desmond more times than what we've seen this episode because he possibly maybe sought him out after, maybe, um, especially after what happened to Sarah. Or maybe he just thought to himself, oh, it was a miracle. I did the best I could in the surgery and it's a, a miracle that um, Sarah was cured. Or maybe Desmond rocked up, I don't know, and did some juju to her. I don't know. Or the universe works in mysterious ways. It lost so many questions. I'm just theorizing all over the place. And it's like I'm trying to cover all grounds. Absolutely loved episode one of season two of Lost. I hope you guys enjoyed my reaction. It's been your boy Lee Moses. Take care. God bless and peace. Take care.